Hi everyone, this is Nicole. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I created this video so that I can share some knowledge and my thoughts about different types of watercolor products. Watercolor has been really big on paper crafting and card making lately and I know for those who are new to card making and paper crafting this can get really overwhelming. So I created this video we're gonna go over different types of products that you can use for watercoloring and hopefully you'll find this helpful and give you some information before you invest in any products. The products that I'm going to review are basically affordable. They're not really a high-end expensive products where it's going to break your arms and leg to invest in it. So today I'm going to start with this watercolor cakes. This is Simply Art Watercolor Cake Set by Low Cornell and this is $7. This is the cheapest product that I have on my watercolor product collection and this is great for those who are new to watercoloring and want to see how they like it, if they want to invest in more in the future. I think this is a great product to start with. So in the United States you can get this about $7 or so depending on the um, online shop that you're gonna go but I bought this at Amazon and it was about seven dollars so I'm gonna go ahead and link it up below so you can get it on your own but for you to work with this you're going to ink up your brush or not ink it up you're gonna make a brush really wet with water and then you're gonna work into the dry watercolor cake depending on the colors you might need to work a little bit more into it with more water. With some colors, it's really easy for you to just wet your brush a little bit with water and then work with the color to come out. So depending on how much water you put in, you can get it really thick, you can get it really light, and it blends in pretty well. I think for, for a beginning person who's doing watercoloring this is pretty easy product to work with and once you lay down the colors like over here what I'm doing right now you can go back with more water with the watercolor brush and blend it in and lift up the colors to spread out more. The images I'm using over here on my watercolor paper are from Mama Elephant. I think this is Magnolia stamp set. I will also link that below so you can get it. I like to try out different types of watercolor products with a lot of images that has outlines. So you have a lot of empty spaces so you can add a lot of colors in it. I think that's the best way to try that. So next item I'm going to use is Inktense watercolor block. Inktense is really famous for watercolor pencils but I already had some watercolor pencils on my hand that I got it from different brand so I thought I would go and invest in ink blocks. They basically the same thing as watercolor pencils but you can do a lot more with it with blocks in my opinion. But today I'm gonna just go over a very basic things and later on in my future videos I'll share more tips and tricks about how to use watercolor blocks in a different way. But Inktense watercolor blocks come out really easy. They melt it really well so you just need to wet your brush with the water and rub it on the block and then lift up the color that way. It is really rich and dark so like I do him over here you can just add a tiny little bit of ink and then wet it with the water to create a very subtle background. It has a lot of pigment in it once you lift it up and then you can always go back and add more colors and lift it around the area but once you soak your watercolor brush with a lot of ink test pigment ink you don't have to re-ink it again to go back and add more color so it's really dark, rich, vivid, and very fun. And once it dries, it dries opaque. So for um, low Cornell and for Inktense, once it dries, you'll see if you go over the lines, the color will stay on the top of the line. So you might want to be careful with that. So next, I'm going to look at Peerless watercolor paper. These are really unique, something different than I have worked before, but these are a sheet of paper with watercolor pigment concentrations on it. So you just need a very little to work on your projects. It has different packages. I got the basic, 
I think, complete packages that has different colors. So it comes in in a long sheet like you saw. And I also got a bonus pack. The bonus pack has colors that are not including the basic color collection. And these are more of a uh, two by two or four by four, I think. I'm not sure. Just a little bit of squares um, as far as I know. I think this is two by two. And it has 40 different colors that you can try on. So you can really expand your collection really well. Um, I'm going to share my swatches later on on how I save peerless watercolors. But I just kind of cut up a little bit of squares and put them on my swatches so that I know what colors are what. Because it looks different when they're on the paper. So that way you can reference the different colors really, really well. So I just use my paintbrush or watercolor brush and lift up the colors by wetting a little bit of the corner of the paper. A little bit goes a really long way because it's highly concentrated. So you just need to try a little bit and you can always go back to add more. But it's, as you can see, I just did a little bit of corner on that block and I can always go back to my richest colored area to lift up the colors and light and uh, color the areas with more light, uh, lighter effect. And if I wanna go a little bit more darker, I can always go back like I'm doing over here and ink, ink it up and watercolor on top of the images that I already do. They blend really, really well. I really love it. This is about um, middle price range, I think. It was a bit, little bit more expensive, but this is so worth it. And if you really love watercoloring and you're starting to get really into it, I highly, highly recommend it. And these tiny squares goes really, really a long way. It lasts a really long time. So I really enjoy trying with this products and I love coloring with them. So next, I'm going to work you through with a watercolor pencil. Watercolor pencil, you just draw on the uh, images over here like you see and you can go back and blend it in with water paint. So you just draw in the area that you kind of want it to be dark that way you have some shading going on and then you can take in the brush and water and bring in the colors from outwards to inwards or from the darker areas to the lighter area depending on how intense and how light you want the colors to be. So it blends pretty well and there are some streaks that can be left on the paper depending on how strong you color on so I would just be careful with that but you can also lift up the colors with the watercolor brush from the from the um, pencil and then draw on like that I know I just showed just a little bit glimpse of it but that's how you can also do it so over here I'm working on water-based marker I have two different types of water-based marker the first one is Lil Plume this is some of, some of the new markers that I just purchased and I wanted to see how well they blend in and how nicely they uh, you know, get on the paper and it doesn't blend in very well as much as the peerless one or the ink tense one but you can still get a good effect and I would recommend watercoloring or blending them in right after you draw on the paper because it can draw pretty faster than the other watercolor products so I would just recommend that if you don't want those streaks or the colored area like over here that are left and not really blended in well you don't if you don't want that I would recommend just drawing one section and then watercolor it in and then drawing moving moving on to the next one. So this one is Stampin' Up! and you can also see the difference. I just wanted to show you a different types of markers and you can also blend those in and it goes a little bit lighter than the Lou Plume marker but you can add more colors if you like once they dry. Um, I would say you can probably blend in pretty well with the with the Stampin' Up. I don't know, to me Stampin' Up blended a little bit more than Lou Plume, but they both work pretty well and you can always go back. And if you don't want those streaks and you want more natural blended look, you can always take out your acrylic blocks and put colors on there using markers and then add water and lift up the colors that way and as you can see over here I'm doing that so this is one of the ways the other way that you can also do is you can stamp with those two markers so take out your stamp set and you would need to just ink it up 
with using the markers and then stamp it that way and then blend it in. Um, I didn't show it over here because I just wanted to show a direct way to color them on the paper. So in the future video, I will go ahead and share those tips as well. But I know that loop plume stays a little bit more wet when you stamp with it. So you can blend it a little bit more better than the Stampin' Up! marker. So there are a couple of differences. That's why I decided to invest it on the loop plume one when I already had Stampin' Up! because they have different personalities. Last one, we're going to go over the Distress Ink markers. These have so much techniques that you can do with it, a lot of potential. If you are new to card making and haven't invested in any markers, I would highly recommend getting the Distress markers first and then you can get the Plume or you can get Stampin' Up! or you can get other markers that are on the market because Distress Ink does everything that regular markers do and on top of that you can watercolor with it. These inks are supposed to in, uh, active or react to the water once it's dried. So the other watercolor products that I showed previously, once they dry, they're permanent. But with the Distress Ink markers, you can let them dry. And if you want to make it a little bit more lighter, or if you want to go back, add more colors, you can always re reactivate them with water. So it's a really cool effect. And you can always go back and add more colors. With the markers, the things that I would not recommend doing is lifting them up directly from the markers with your brush tip and then putting them on the paper. Um, you're gonna, you can ruin the markers and ask me how I know it. So that's a, just a really glimpse of watercolor paper. I didn't want to make the video too long because I think these basic information kind of shows how well they color and you know what kind of properties they have for if different markers. So I hope that was helpful. But this time, in this part of the video, I'm going to share how I make my own swatches for watercoloring. So I created the sheets on my own after I got the Peerless watercolor uh, paper sheets. And I just cut up the squares, attached them, and then I cover them with transparency uh, film. That way, the inks doesn't, you know, move around and it doesn't ruin other papers, etc. So what I did, I added a strip of watercolor paper on the squares and then added the names on the bottom and then did a little bit of coloring on the bottom so that I know exactly how they look like once they touch the paper because they can look very different. And I always have some extra rooms to extend my collection. For my other watercolor products, I created the small swatches that I can always refer to. So for example, for Lou Plume, they are numbered automatically and there are like 108 different colors, I believe. So I just add a little bit on the watercolor and I'll add it to the paper. Same thing for the Stampin' Up! markers. I separate them with by their fa uh, color families, like brights, subtles, regals, and neutrals. And then the next page, I added in colors. So I kind of, you know, add a little bit of color in there and then write onto the paper with their names on it. And then retired colors are on the bottom because I have some of the retired colors. So that's how I know exactly how they look like on the paper. The next one I'm going to show you is the uh, watercolor pencil by Stedler. I have a Stedler one, but you can also get Intense one. And I just wrote the numbers with the Sharpies on the paper so that I can refer them with uh, the numbers rather than just by their names or guess the colors. It looks really different once you put the paper, once you put it on the paper and once you just look at it. Next one is the uh, I think this is the low Cornell one. So, oh, never mind. This is an intense one. So, with the intense blocks, what I did is I moved up from the bottom right color, moved up, and then went to the left side and then go down. So that way it kind of has a arch shaped and I know which colors, which order. That way I don't have to worry about mixing them up. So this way I can reference the colors exactly how they look like and it's really helpful. The last one is the low Cornell one. As you can see, I added numbers with my Sharpies right next to the watercolor case and put onto the watercolor paper. That way I can refer them to really well.
So I have three types of watercolor paper swatches that you can use. I'm going to link it up on my blog. So there's horizontal one with the smaller ones. This is the peerless one, has a bigger squares, but you can also use for other watercolors if you like. And then I have the smallest one, the vertical one that I use for my other swatches. So depending on how you like it and what you want, you can get smaller vertical one, smaller horizontal one, and you can also get the bigger square, the peerless one. So you can go to my blog and download the swatches and use it on your watercolor collection. Um, I hope you find this helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in any of the products mentioned in this video, please click the link below to get to these full supplies list. You can shop directly from there. And also if you want to get more information on other projects and other inspiration that I shared, please go to my website at scrapsandsteps.com to get more details and photos of the projects. And you can also see other projects on there as well. Please connect with me. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. If you have Apple products, you can have Pipit. I just joined there. So follow me, subscribe to me and share with me. That way you can connect with me on a daily basis. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you find this helpful. Bye-bye.